let's let's bring up actually our first speaker actually uh, uh, and uh, I think it's Jong Yong. Uh, uh, nice to meet you, Jong Yong. Actually, let's let her actually get herself unmuted and. Uh, uh, and uh, John Young, are you actually like a graduate student with Exe uh, Juho? Actually, are you a postdoc? Who are you? Uh, yes, I'm an MS student working with Juho in KAIST. Excellent. Well, great. Actually, we're, we're excited to hear you. Actually, I've known actually uh, Juho for a long time, and I'm excited for everyone to hear about this work. So uh, um, take it away. Um, hello, I'm Chang Yang Kim from KAIST, and I'm working with uh, as I mentioned before, with Juho, my advisor. And I'm glad to share our work, Fitbit, towards development of responsive and fluid video content adaptation. So one of our motivations was this question. Um, what if we can adapt video learning content to mobile devices responsively and flexibly, just like responsive websites, depending on the different screen sizes? So learners consume video-based learning content in mobile environments with the increased ubiquity of mobile devices. However, one of the main limitations of mobile devices is their limited screen sizes. For this reason, most video content that is originally designed for a desktop is not readable and digestible in small screens. Existing learning frameworks also highlight the importance of such vision design, visual design factors in learning. So inappropriate font sizes of learning material impose unnecessary cognitive load and lower judgment of learning as well. And an excessive uh, amount of words is another factor that increases the cognitive load and information overload. Too many images can also increase cognitive load by splitting learners' attention. So in this work, we present Fitbit, an interactive video interface that provides the pipeline generate content adaptation, user control direct manipulation, and then customized content adaptation. Um, before diving into design goals and computational pipeline of our work, I first want to share the demo video of Fitbit. North and the South Pole, as determined by our second right-hand and you can see here in our picture, it's determined by our second right-hand rule. And you can see... Oh, uh, now I will introduce the computational pipelines to build this system. So our computational pipeline generates content adaptation to make the video learning content more readable and digestible on the small screens of, of mobile devices. So our first design goal was to support responsive design of video content for mobile devices. Like while study content such as images or text is easy to responsively adapt it to various screen sizes, existing, existing work uh, lacks responsive design technique for video content. And the lecture slides on the left side are the original lecture slides. And the ones on the right side are the pipeline generated slides with trimmed down amount of content and enlarged font sizes to fit the small screens. After the content adaptation, our system allows learners to directly manipulate the content while they are watching the videos. And by resize, like they can resize and reposition to complement the default content adaptation and to fit their to fit their own needs. Uh, this is because the one-size-fits-all approach applying a single design to all the learning contexts without tailoring to individual needs has limitations. After a um, user finishes watching video lecture, then we generate customized content adaptation, which is actually still an ongoing work, while having direct content, uh, direct control over the content design allows learners to adjust the design to fit their own needs it might be, we think uh, it might hinder our learning if they need to manually adjust the content each time. So to reduce the need for manual manipulation, we propose techniques to personally calibrate the content adaptation by reflecting individual users' preferences. To achieve the aforementioned, the first design goal, we developed a computational pipeline that automatically adapts video content. 
So it consists of four main steps. First, it detects um, shot boundaries of the video lectures. For shot boundary detection, we used a variant of the methods suggested by the existing work. The shots extracted from the shot boundary detection correspond to unique lecture slides in most cases. And as a next step, it deconstructs the ex extracted keyframes into in-video elements, such as text boxes or images. It first detects all connected components from the edge image of the shot. And for each identified component, we, they find the minimal bounding boxes, uh, which um, contains the component. All the text contained in each bounding box is then recognized using the Tesseract OCR engine. And the third step is a text to script matching step. And in this step, we first established uh, matches between the text in the slides and the transcript using BERT based text similarity scores. After constructing matches, we merged the deconstructed um, text elements into units that need to be displayed to learners at once in a single frame. So we devised a rule-based rule method to group text elements into atomic units. So these are the rules that we devised considering linearity and cohesion of the text content. So what an atomic unit means here is for example, like three bullet points should be displayed at once in a single frame if an instructor explains them in a non-linear manner, such as referring to them um, back and forth. So in this case, our algorithm group uh, three bullet points as an atomic unit and do not segment them like into multiple frames. And the last step of the pipeline is to apply the design guidelines. So for the font sizes, if the average font size of a frame is smaller than 21.4 point, then the fonts are resized to meet the guidelines in case um, when the screen space is not enough to enlarge the fonts, the system enlarges the fonts to the extent to which there is no overlaps between the content. And for the number of words, um, the amount of text is adjusted if a frame contains more than 30 words and we do not um, segment a single text box, even if it violates the guidelines. And another exception was the text element, which is grouped as an atomic unit in the previous stage. So we did not segment the atomic units regardless of the number of words um, they contain. And regarding the layout of the adapted content, we used the original positions of the elements in the video and we have chosen these design vectors since they were the main vectors that causes uh, that cause readability issues. And in particular, the images and graphics are out of our scope for the adaptation, since there were just few uh, quantitative guidelines for images and they were not main vector that caused readability issues in mobile devices. And as shown in the video demo, learners can resize and reposition the in-video elements in real time while they are watching the videos. So for example, learners can enlarge a complex image which is not visible on a small screen and they can um, also resize text as needed by dragging the edges of the text boxes. North and the South Pole as determined by our second right-hand and you can see here in our picture, determined by our second right-hand rule. And, you can see and this is the ongoing part of our work. And we adopted Wizard of Oath method to implement the customized content adaptation based on users' uh, manipulation results, results. So after learners finish watching the videos, the system calculates the average size of fonts to which a user manipulates the text. And based on the calculated font sizes, the system generates future content adaptation tailored to the individual learners. So for example, like if a certain learner watches a video resizing the font size as 20 point on average, 
then the prototype displays the feature adaptation with 20 point as a default font sizes, a font size tailored to the individual learner. To summarize the process um, in this step, first um, learner resizes, resizes fonts as preferred while watching the video. And then our system captures the preferred font size of each learner. Then we generate future content adaptation with that customized font size using Wizard of Oz approach. And we envision that this can be an initial step to adopt mixed initiative design for a customized uh, video content adaptation, allowing users to refine the system generated content adaptation result. And now let me share the evaluation results. So we first evaluated the design compliance rate um, after the content adaptation. The compliance rate for design guidelines improved from 2% to 89% for the font sizes and 67% to 87% for the word count. And we also conducted user study with 24 participants and they were first required to watch two video lectures using two different video players, the baseline and Fitbit interface. After watching the video, they were asked about their perception on each video player and the reasons behind the real time manipulations. Then um, they completed a questionnaire on the usability, readability, learning experience, and cognitive load. We have found that Fitbit uh, significantly improves learning experience with increased concentration, perceived learning experience, and readability. Here are some representative feedback from learners and our hypothesis. So we first hypothesized that Fitbit with automated content adaptation increases the readability of content and perceived usefulness. The learners found the lecture material generated by Fitbit is more readable and they felt less fatigue. And our second hypothesis was that Fitbit improves um, perceived learning experience and concentration. Most of the participants found the default content adaptation provides improved learning experience with increased readability. And our last hypothesis was that Fitbit's direct manipulation feature enhances interactivity, allowing learners to refine and complement the automated content adaptation. And the participants found it useful since they could compensate for the default adaptation results, while some participants didn't really need the direct manipulation since the default, default uh, content adaptation result was sufficient for them. And um, for the uh, customized content adaptation, we asked participants' opinions about Wizard of Oz tailored font sizes based on the user's manipulation results. All the participants expressed um, positive feedback on the customized content adaptation. The participants um, expected AI to generate customized um, content designs that reflect their preferences while they want to control the design settings via manual adjustments, like direct manipulation. And future work can apply a mixed initiative approach to iteratively improve content adaptation, depending on individual learners' context, which involves learners in the loop around AI. And lastly, I want to discuss possible applications and um, extensions of our work. First, um, possible application of Fitbit is an accessible mobile video learning. Uh, there are a bunch of web accessibility evaluation and support tools, while current technologies lack support for accessible video content for people with low vision or dyslexia. We believe that Fitbit can be extended to a research of such accessibility support. And secondly, uh, we can extend the scope of content adaptation to images and layouts, since um, we currently focus on text elements as a major design factor in vector design. So image content uh, detection or layout optimization algorithms can be applied to our current work. 
for more comprehensive adaptation. So um, please refer to the paper for more details and I appreciate your time and attention.